Flora, I want to come to you first because, uh, you know, there's a sense of shock about this story when it began, but an even greater sense of shock now about this letter. And I wonder if you've seen it. I'm sure you probably have because it's everywhere that yes. young Shraddha wrote to the police saying, this man is beating me up. He's harming me. His parents are in on it. He's going to chop me into little pieces. I need to be saved. And then 15 months later, that's precisely what happens. What would you say to something like that, Flora? See, I just want to, I was listening to your report, and um, I just want to say that, you know, most of the times, um, what happens is the victim, even when she comes out and she has the courage, because I'm, I'm I really... Uh, you know, the courage of writing that letter and making it to the police station and telling them that, listen, this is all that's happening with me. And the police actually acknowledge that. But people forget that the victim has to go back to the abuser. Most of the time, even when you try to run, you are emotionally blackmailed or you are threatened back to the same, uh, you know, same environment with the same person. And uh, yes, the, the abuse kind of magnifies after that because every time you try to flee from there, uh, trust me, if you're going to go back, we're going to be, you know, uh, bashed up even more. Uh, so I just feel that the fact that she wrote this letter and the police acknowledged it and then just, you know, let it go once she had to go back to her abuser and come back and write a letter ki, okay, I have no problems, I'm staying there by my own free will and there's no danger to my life. Understand that when a girl comes to a police station and, you know, um, submits a letter like that, I think we should have, I mean, it takes a lot of guts to even come ahead and say that. And, uh, I don't know why the judiciary or the law or the people, uh, you know, didn't understand that when, if she has to go back to the same environment, she has to come back and take the complaint back. And once mm. a complaint is filed, even if it's taken back, we should have a unit which says, you know, some officers to kind of follow back, uh, follow up with the same victim and ask, are you all right? Are you all right? That should be a regular thing. Mm. Because uh, once you go back, trust me, um, things just get worse. Um, even if I am to, you know, um, I'm saying she did manage to write a letter in my case, yes, yes. even after I came out and I had all the medical reports, I, the police, the day I went to the cops, they refused to write an FIR. Hmm. So, I, and I had to, I sat there the whole day after coming back and I requested them. My father's an ex-army officer. He said, can you please write an NC, a simple NC of my daughter. She has a fractured jaw. They refused to write that the first day because my uh, abuser was a well-known personality with a lot of contacts. Mm -hmm. The second day I had to approach the commissioner and then get my FI done. So, it is a long battle. The sooner you address it, I'm saying, I, I mean, she had the guts to actually, while being in that relationship, go to the police station and you know, have that complaint acknowledged, the police, yes, should have followed up because she told her friends, she told her colleagues who could not help her because, again, she's staying with the same abuser. Yes. Uh, and there is a lot of threats. It's not easy getting out of an abusive relationship. No, you just I, can't and, say, okay, it's And not Flora, you know, you've put go. into context, uh, you've put into context what a lot of people aren't able to fully understand. And I thank you for that because as someone who has gone to the police yourself,